Good morning and welcome to the Capital Gang. I am Oscar Semoyam Soke and as Moses would say, of a morning show with a bevy of topics for discussion in, in the, this morning on Gang. In the hot seat, we have uh, Mr. Frank Rusa. Uh, welcome to the Capital Gang, Mr. Frank Rusa. A wonderful morning to you. Yeah. Thank you. I, I, I missed a bit of you, but welcome to Gang. Thank you, sir. Yes. You, 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 every time I've interviewed you, you are in an, should I call it a difficult job? <laughs> uh, last time I interviewed you, you were with iPod. Yeah. And I was telling you that iPod is going nowhere. And, and here you are again. Yeah, so I think uh, somebody actually cracked a joke like that. They said, a, a friend of mine abroad was saying that every time I hear you're changing places, it's like you're jumping from fire to fire. Maybe you are made for the fire, but no, I think it's just one of those things. But I'm glad to to uh, to take on this responsibility. Mm. It is an immense responsibility, albeit for 100 days. It's a caretaker role. But I recognize the immense responsibility and the challenges that come with it. Yes. And uh, yeah, here I am, and uh, let's see how it goes. Of cases here. I don't know if as then I've not seen anything yet, but maybe there's something coming mm. up that comes but it comes up with uh, with opportun with these kind of uh, opportunities. There is always qu uh, different perspectives, but let me use this opportunity, Oscar, to first of all and most importantly, the many staff of KCCA. We have over two thousand staff for the big vote of confidence that ex put in me. I had a big meeting with all my staff about two days ago, and uh, it was very overwhelming. The warmth, the energy, and the, the sort of adoption of uh, the agenda we are choosing to take on in these next 100 days was very, very inspiring on my part. I must say that uh, as I come into this role, I see myself as a team leader, really a coordinating figure at the helm of the technical wing of KCCA where well, I'll be leading a multidisciplinary uh, bunch of experts on different subjects to deal with a big basket of challenges. Of course, the biggest challenge that I find on the table is the challenge of solid waste management and the issue of garbage. Okay, you, 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 you first wait there. We, we'll, we'll get to you. Yeah. Hey, I don't want you asking your own questions and answering them. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to set my own exam and yes. pass it very highly. <laughs> just, just wait. Uh, in the studio as well, I have uh, the oldies, uh, mm -hmm. Dr. Agnes Atim. I say oldies, the, you know, the three of us are oldies this side. Yes, yes. Lydia Anyoto is coming and Abdul there. We are the oldies. You're I most know. welcome to gang today. Well, thank you. Thank you very mm. much. And okay. uh, I'm glad we have on the odd seat the right person. The right to, person. To answer yes. the, the right uh -huh. questions. Yes. <laughs> yes. And then on the young seat, we have Honorable Goreth uh, Namuga, you're oh, most welcome. On the young seat. <laughs> on the young seat, on the youthful <laughs> seat. Yes. You're most welcome, Honorable Goreth uh, Namuga. Thank you and good morning, colleagues. Uh, Honorable Dr. Pea is my colleague. We are together on the budget committee for the first two and a half years. Ah, She's an amazing girl. Eh? You know, yeah. you know, though you call her old. Eh? Yes. <laughs> no, this is amazing. This is only in comparison, yes. <laughs> Uh, nice yes. being here this morning. Thank you. The last time she was on gang, she was in real, real trouble. All the listeners said, you know, this one is a Museveni, Museveni. Now she has Frank Rusa here to be a Museveni person <laughs> as well. That mm. I was talking a lot about Museveni. Yes, because of Museveni, the Museveni. I, I hope we don't have that again in Kitezi. Kit 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 because know. they want to blame everything to my old... Mm. Mm. Uh, so social media wanted to murder her. No, completely. but that is expected. Mm. Why is that? It's ex expected because uh, he's the head, head of the family. Okay. So credit and discredit all goes to him. Okay. Uh -huh. Yes. Thank then you. I have a youthful journalist in, in the <coughs> studio. Uh, this we've been here before. Tony Kent Chaze. Uh, you're most welcome, Tony mm -hmm. Kent. Thank you so much, Mwalimu. And mm -hmm. uh, as well, a welcome to the rest of the panelists in this okay. studio. Since you work for government, I should also say that you are also uh, uh, NRM. <laughs> um, uh, I want because to believe... All of them are, uh, are working eh? for the uh, NRM I want, government. I want so. to believe we, we might all be working for the NRM, mm -hmm. but uh, there is one thing that uh, perhaps majority of the Ugandans have never pl uh, pl placed their attention at and upon, which is objectivity. 
Mm. If the NRM is doing bad, we shall not do the bad thing. If the NRM is doing right and doing good, we shall probably support and uh, be one with the NRM. So when one talks of we are working for the NRM, yes, maybe, but uh, in the aspect of what is good, not necessarily everything that comes as it comes. Okay, and and do you work only at, at, at one radio station? Of, or you work across the radio stations? Uh, basically, it's just one. Which one? That is Magic 100 FM. Okay, so you don't go to the others? Um, in, in unless it's an invite like it is ah, for the KCR yeah. at okay. and Capital FM. Mm. Yeah. So you're most welcome to the Capital Gang once again. Thank you so much, Oscar. So we have in the hot seat uh, Mr. Frank Rusa, uh, KCCA in uh, hot seat completely. Let's start with Kitezi. There was a notice that uh, Kitezi people should go home. It wasn't your notice. It's, it's Prime Minister's notice, Prime Minister's office notice. Is that correct? Yes, but there's, an, there's actually a notice I issued yesterday. I signed on it yesterday because of a new development that has come up in Kitezi. And I'm glad that you've asked that question first. Let me use this opportunity to alert all the people, our people around Kitezi, Kitetika, and the neighboring village that uh, as you know the government of uganda put a 200 meter buffer zone around the dump site where the dump site was where the big unfortunate tragic accident happened and uh, we have told people to leave those 200 meters to vacate those areas for now until we complete the modalities of uh, compensation and everything else but we really think that there is an imminent problem even right now there's a residual problem going on yesterday. My technical team was telling me that they have seen another crack emerge. You know, ever since it has happened, there was a some sort of water channel which was blocked and there was a backflow. That backflow with the rains has been expanding and as I speak, about 84 houses have been submerged. In addition to the accident that we had, there's another 84 houses which have been submerged and we are doing we have about 10 excavators there we're going to be adding another 10 or so shortly to try and break through and get the water flowing back in its normal way but for now it's still very risky place i know the borders are very porous and people keep coming in the west pickers to ak living there but it's very dangerous i have asked the our leaders in kasangati and the security apparent personnel in that area to try and keep people away because we don't want to have a second accident even if we are trying to work around the clock to deal with the issue we don't want to have another uh, human tragedy so abantu bafemwe na abali awo around chitezi muve wo muve mu buffer zone okay i hope they listen to capital gang <laughs> or they will be told or, or they will be told yeah. okay and these people that are in that buffer, so, bu- buffer zone do they live there or they just come to work so what is happening is that uh, at Kitezi, there, we had about 39 uh, acres of land where the dump site was. But then around it, there are people, there was a whole economy, ecosystem around it of people working in jobs to do with garbage collection and things like this. But there are also other private uh, Milo developers. There are schools, there are homes. There's, so there's a, very many properties in hundreds within that 200 meter buffer zone. So uh, we are asking all those people to first step out. Mm. We we'll put a, a ring around that uh, as we try to deal to de-escalate okay. the, the, the problem. And now the the ones in the camp that camp wasn't managed by KCC. It was managed by uh, Prime Minister's office. Yes, the office Ministry of the of Prime disaster. Minister mm. was managing the camp. Let me just explain this. When the disaster happened, the number of houses that got covered by rubbish and many people lost their lives. We, uh, uh, we have about 35 who lost their lives. Uh, unfortunately, very sad incident. And maybe another 10 are still missing. Uh, apart from those, when the excavators came to rescue the people, they had to break through. There was no access way. So that would break another maybe 24 houses to break through and get to rescue these people. So there's also those kinds of people. The ones whose houses were broken, the ones whose houses were submerged in the, uh, in the rubbish heap. So those are all in the camp. Then we had people in the buffer zone where we, when we declared the 200 meters around the dump site. Some of those people came to live in the campsite. But the campsite has now been closed officially by the office of the Prime Minister. Uh, some money has been given to all the people who are in the campsite to go and have temporary. The tenants who are tenants have been asked to, 
to leave, of course. But those who are landlords have been asked to find temporary shelter as we try to work out in a fast-tracked way of all the modalities associated with the valuation of their properties and hopefully get compensation through so that they can be able to start their lives. In the meantime, we are fast-tracking conversations with a whole range of uh, investors, the some people, uh, so many were putting out a call for proposals to get a, a, a 360 degree uh, waste management solution. And uh, we are talking about things like uh, a, a 360 uh, uh, waste management plan, which is going to deal with recycling, waste to energy, manure production all these other things. There's so much you can do around West. So we are picking lessons, big good lessons from especially countries like Ethiopia, which had a similar problem like ours, and they also lost quite a number of people. And they have managed now to reach that point of having their waste e easily uh, transformed into energy in Ethiopia. I think there's a company there called Cambridge Africa, and there are many others where people have received delegations from Eth Korea, South Korea, Ghana, South Africa. There are so many proposals we are looking at. Yeah, but, but we want but to make a good the, evalu a technical is, evaluation of yeah. them and try to get them best. For, but but, but for how long? For it is said that KCC has had these proposals for quite a while. Yes, so. you see, we have been having walk-in proposals. So what happens in this country uh, when you have uh, big-time investors who come so they'll go and speak to the president and give him their good ideas. The president says, go and speak to KCCA. As that one is coming in, somebody else comes from the minister, office of the minister. Others come. So there's been all those unsolicited proposals over the years. But we had never really come up with a well-syndicated, organized, elaborate, thorough, comprehensive approach. But right now, this incident has uh, brought it to the fore that maybe we need to have a very elaborate well synthesized coordinated and coherent plan so we are going to look at all these proposals put up a technical team a, a multidisciplinary technical team from the minister of energy the minister uh, the minister of science and technology some people from our uh, public health department and environmental department to sit together synthesize these proposals and arrive at those we think are best suited to deal with our unique challenges given the context of Uganda and we want to have also a, a solid a solid waste management uh, solution that is not just for Kampala but can also be able to be applied to the various cities because this waste garbage problem is a problem that is now uh, big with nest in all the new cities of, of Uganda. So we should take this opportunity to have a comprehensive solid management pol uh, solid waste management policy that can have applicability across the country so that we can be we can have a turnkey solution and once and for all so we never have these kind of challenges in the future. Mm. And then Dundu, we've heard that uh, KCA owns land in, in Dundu. Yeah, so in the past, because uh, Ketezi was supposed to be decommissioned as early as 2015, that was the first time we got a report saying, no, guys, you need to get out of here. So at that time, our predecessors working with the government decided to buy over 139 acres of land in a place called Dundu in Mkono district. Now, when people saw what was happening at Kitezi uh, and they had us going to Dundu, immediately they rose up in arms saying, there's no <laughs> way you're bringing Kitezi to Dundu. And they went to court. Uh, they don't want the <laughs> chaos of Kitezi. But what they didn't realize is that what we were thinking about Dundu was not a repeat of the dump site at Kitezi. We were thinking of Dundu in terms of making it the place to launch the waste to energy uh, plant. I have been to many countries where, and I've visited, the last time I was in the US, I went to Maryland and I looked at their waste to energy plant. If you go to a modern waste to energy plant, you can't even smell that there's anything like garbage nearby because it is, it is consumed and uh, incinerated and it is, it's very, uh, very green and healthy. But because people are thinking about the dump site, there's that resistance. So right now, government is thinking differently. There is a school of thought that is saying that the people we are going to relocate from uh, Kitezi, instead of carrying the garbage of Kitezi and take it to Rundu to be the raw material for waste energy, why don't you re get the people who you have displaced from Kitezi, give them some good land in Dundu and move the human beings and let Kitezi remain a facility dedicated to garbage? Some people are saying, no, we don't want to leave this place. This is So there's all debates, and of course, we cannot force people. So there's a lot of consultation going on, and I'm sure that in due time, we'll be able to deal with that. But let me say this, Oscar. 
that while this is going on today Kampala is asking what do do what do we do with the garbage that is accumulating mm. at the moment because every day this town produces 2500 tons of garbage actually the greater Kampala metropolitan area produces 3500 tons basically we are talking about 3500 3.5 million kilograms of of, 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 of of garbage. So where are we putting it in the meantime? We have had to speak to our sister uh, local governments through our Lord Mayor and all other people in Mukono to allow us to dump in Katikolo. At one point, we are dumping in uh, in, uh, in, uh, in Tebe and Kumba. But they are saying, no, 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 this is enough. This is uh, We are also getting overwhelmed. So we are speeding up a, a process of acquiring close to 200 acres of land in a, in, a, in a place within 30 kilometers where we can now have a purpose-built dump site as we prepare for more medium-term and long-term strategies of doing waste to energy uh, plants. So I'm sure that in the next uh, w few weeks or so, the garbage crisis that we have been witnessing is going to be brought into normalcy, back to normalcy, in, hopefully. In, in just a few weeks? In a few weeks, because we're doing, we're working around the clock. Mm. We are working around the clock, speeding up the procurement processes. Our teams are working day and night. We have deployed all sorts of uh, of uh, our all our teams, including uh, our casual laborers. Everybody is putting all hands on deck, because right now the garbage situation. It's not only just the accumulation of garbage. We also worried about a possibility of a cholera outbreak. So there's the there's a component of disease, there's a component of dealing with 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 the situation at Kitesi, but also where do we put the rubbish in the in the, in the meantime? So all this is uh, is is being considered. Let me also say that 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 river we are talking about at Kitesi is a river not of just of water but of something called leachate. Mm. Leachate is a is a liquid that comes out of uh, compressed garbage over time. It is a very dangerous substance. And, uh, and, and it can have a lot of harmful effects if it contaminates the water. So there has to be, it has to be treated. So all these are uh, solutions in the bucket just to focus on this garbage scenario, situation. But I am, I am convinced the other time we had, uh, I escorted our minister to cabinet. And while there, I got the sense that the cabinet, the president, his excellency, the president and the cabinet of Uganda have given this waste management issue a serious, serious priority. Mm. And I'm sure if they give us the resources and the people of Kampala also collaborate and listen to our messages, together we should be able to deal with this challenge and hopefully have a better way of managing the West as we move okay. forward. Uh, for, for, for a long time, the former ED of KCC complained that she didn't have any money, didn't have money to fix roads. Uh, we had her here earlier in the year and then she got six billion for roads and so on. So where are you going to get money from? I think I want to agree with her to an extent that it is true that if you... When I came into KCCA in my first uh, three or four months, I spent time speaking to directors across the board. Directors in revenue, directors in engineering, in uh, all these public health and all these colleagues to try and diagnose the malaise that had affected us. And one of the key critical problems that we had, uh, people always talk about Jennifer's time, Jennifer Musisi's time. But they forget that in Jennifer Musisi's time, the budget of KCCA was three times what it is right now. We are operating at a third of what the budget was in Jennifer Musisi's time. How yet, did she manage that? Yet the population, mm. let me say this, because that's important, mm. yet the population of Kampala is increasing. So you have more pressure on the resources, you have more people coming in, leaving the villages to come and live in towns, yet the budget has been going down. Now, there's a whole range of issues. Of course, we have a lot of pressures on our budget because, as we know, our country has many, many challenges to deal with. So that is a, the, the resource envelope is always a problem. But also, I come in at a time in this month, I'm just telling some of the colleagues that the uniqueness of the time when I come in as acting ED also coincides with the beginning of the budget cycle. The budget called circular has just been passed. So now there is a the budget, the new budgeting style that has been adopted by the Ministry of Finance is called program-based budgeting. You have to go to the various program uh, spaces and make the argument for your budget. And we have decided as management to take this uh, process seriously. It is good that now the focus is on KCCA because of the garbage situation. I'm sure we shall get audience with the, with the powers that be, the, the, the people in appropriation, the people who divide the resource envelope, to understand that you, Kampala is unique. We have a situation that can easily turn into an emergency. The issues of Kampala cannot be dealt with as if they are by the ways. Because remember that this city, 
contribute 65 percent of you of, of, of our country's gdp and on most of the taxes are collected in this city we have to make kampala livable we have to make the roads work we have to make sure that productivity mm. that contributes to the resource envelope yeah. is given the could, less self could, could you make i am sure that they will hear mm. this argument yeah. i'm sure because we well, have many reasonable uh, uh, an easier one would be if if you could collect your money if you could keep your money yeah because oh, that's a good one. Uh, collections are very high they're not very high they could even actually be doubled as we speak today our collections are 117 billion per year they were just a few years ago, they were much less. There's good work being done by our revenue department. In my opinion, I think we could even double or even triple it. But you ask a good question. You're saying, why don't we use money at source? This yeah. is an argument we have always made. Because the way money is released in government, it is released quarterly. Sometimes it's delayed. And yet our work is day to day. So we were saying to, to, to the Minister of Finance, allow us to keep this money at source. And I have been advised by our legal people and, and the people in the Attorney General's chambers that what we will need to do is to amend the public management, the public finance management act to allow that to happen. But I know that there is the goodwill. I think people in, in the Ministry of Finance are comfortable with this. And I think even in government, in parliament, we should find, but we have to go through a process. And this is one of the things that I've put, uh, I've made high priority to push in my 100 days. Okay. Honorable Dr. Agnes Hatim. Yes, thank you. KCCA. <laughs> yes. It's part of your challenge because, uh, oh, sorry, I just say final one with you. Because yeah, of sure. iPod, uh, does that make you, does it make it easier for you to work with uh, Lord Mayor? Oh, thank you so much for raising mm -hmm. that point because it's a very critical point. You see, KCCA, unlike any other authority, you know, when you go to, like, to UNRWA, your job is to do roads, put together a technical team and do the roads. The URA collect the taxes. Women may do the electricity. But KCCA, you have, you do everything the government of Uganda does, but for Kampala. But on top of that, you have got ways of how to deal with it. A very complex governance structure. You've got two ministers. You've got two, law, two a mayor and a deputy. You've got five division mayors. You've got five town clerks. You've got 460 councillors. You've got five RDCs. You've got 18 assistant RCCs. Mm. And you've got 4.5, I mean, 2.5 million people demanding for services. You've got nine MPs. And you've got the president watching over Kampala and wanting things to happen. <laughs> so you have to work in that cycle. So the law requires us to, we have the people who tell us the what to do. Those are the policy makers. Pick it from the president. Then you've got the mayors who give policy direction and the ministers. Then you have a council, which is the supreme body of, of the authority. So it is very, very important to navigate the fragile space of multiple power centers and competing political interests to navigate it. So, of course, when I was in iPod, I, 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 I had a lot of experience dealing with the fragility and complexity of, uh, of finding the intersection of dealing with the politicians of varied interests. But I must say that in the time I've been at KCC, and as, as director legal, I've been representing... Uh, I used to present. To Dor I used to escort Dorothy to the city executive committee and also in various fora, representing her in the council too. I have realized, and I must commend our politicians in Kampala, that there seems to be a, a common denominator when it is the issue of service delivery. Because also they are voters, put them on pressure on issues of service delivery. It doesn't matter if you are NUP, DP, UPC, or whatever it is. Or NRM because the voters are, want service delivery. So we have managed to negotiate a, a space of compromise around service delivery and we are not finding problems. We have had very constructive conversations. Well, you, you, you had fisticuffs very recently. I beg your pardon? When you say you are not finding problems, I'm, I'm reminding you that you've had fisticuffs quite, yes, I'm quite explaining, recently. Let mm. me explain that to you. So we have been having that when it comes to technical because how we work is the technical wing deals with the city executive committee led by the Lord Mayor and when we, we then, then we take it to council for approval. What created that first fight was the question of the report on Kitezi. The council is saying we are in charge of Kampala, we are the overall authority, we want a report. But they want a report on what are the circumstances that led to Kitezi. The mayor is saying the circumstances that led to Kitezi are a subject of investigation by the IGG, are a subject of investigation by the police. We need to first get those reports, incorporate them, and report to you. But the council is saying, no, we need a report now. And the Lord Mayor is saying, no, you wait. So in the process, they start arguing. So 
in the, in the, but I believe that we are going to figure out how to also resolve that because it's not a very complex thing. It is really the sentiments and the passion and the tension that came up with this. And of course, people's emotions were high, mm. but they will be dealt with, I'm sure. Okay, we can allow you some coffee from the <laughs> Thank you so much. As you take comments around the table. Very good. Dr. Tim. Uh, thank you. Yes, I, I was putting to you, that's how I remembered, mm. that it was a government proposal, nearly an NRM proposal, to take the city away from Lukwago. And he, whenever anyone blames him, he says, no, you took the power. Mm. Uh, so do you think this time around, Frank Rusa has a chance to work well in the position he has taken and for 100 days? Thank you very much. And, and I, I must applaud uh, Frank Thank you. for being Frank <laughs> 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 with his name and, and the work he's doing. I, I think it's, uh, it's rare to find some of these public servants accepting that there's a fault and also proposing, giving proposals on how they would want to address it. So, Frank, I think that's good of you. Well, as a poll here was saying, Frank is not very frank. <laughs> that this ga garbage, <laughs> that this, uh, that these garbage management proposals have been have have, have not been unsolicited. <laughs> KCCA sent out RFPs in uh, 2009. Uh -huh. When he comes back on microphone, he will tell us then what will RFPs. Tell us. But some, to, to a greater extent, it may not be frank in everything, <laughs> but to a greater extent, I, I think it brings out very critical issues. One is the issue of planning. And when I hear Frank talks, then I, then I remember I was in government before I joined parliament. There's this thing called MTEF, medium term what expenditure framework which gives all the ministries, departments, and agencies an opportunity to plan in the short term and in the medium term. So when Frank was talking, I was asking, now all these unsolicited proposals, all this Titezi thing, all this that he's talking about he wants to do, and I'm wondering, what is in your MTEF? And where has this Chitezi thing been? Because for me, I think, I mean, we talked about it earlier that we actually knew that it was going to happen. So in that context, I, I really think that uh, Frank needs to be very frank with the plan <laughs> and with the MTEP. So that we, 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 we've, we've talked, we don't want red, uh, red uh, how do I call it? Red flags? No, no, uh, we don't want really words. We, we are looking, the, the, the country and the citizens want to see action. So for me, that planning needs to come out very clearly that in the 100 days, what is it you're going to do? And what do we expect in the medium term and in the long term? I also see a lot of firefighting, and it's not only with KCCA, it's, it's everywhere, that we have institutions that are well established, their laws, their policies, and they know the, the capacity of government and the revenue that we actually uh, uh, forecast every year. But you find that if something happens, then we are really running around, like the way he's looking for 200 uh, you know, acres of land in two weeks and dundu and, and all these kind of things. So I, I think it's important that our ministries and, and agencies and KCCA really, really have to uh, put their foot down and say this is what we want to do. So that even if we are talking about funding, for example, if you are given a hundred billion now, what would you do? Okay, and also he raised the issues of revenue, comparing the time of Jennifer Musisi and now. What happened? Was it uh, is it about capacity? How come that she was able to mobilize all that resources? And and, and I think that time, if I, I, I have been reading quite some 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 article, some reports of KCCA, it was mainly donor funding, right? And so maybe there is something that needs to be done beyond really just lamenting that we don't have money and what is it that we want to fund. And these unsolicited uh, kind of proposals and all that. As KCCA, do we have a plan? Do we have a proposal of what we want to do? So that if we are going, for example, public-private partnership, there is something we put on the table. But what I'm hearing is like they have been bringing with theirs I don't know whether we have really our own plan and, and, and that. Finally, uh, uh, Oscar, this thing of um, living, the, I mean, the, 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 the statements, the, the prime ministers and yours and talking about the buffers and all this, is this coming now that because Kitesi is now at this state, 
or was it was it, when you were taking act when you were establishing that kitesi didn't we have the buffers because you know what, what is uh, no we amazing. had the ed here i don't recall if you're here no it and he said there. of, of never there was no said, buffer no the 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 ed of never said that kitesi should have been killed more than 10 years ago you so know, now these people out will... of commission they decommissioned it so mm. now these people who still go and build there who who, who gives them I, I i thought that before you plan before you build you're supposed to be given clearance by all the relevant agencies so who gave them the mm. the, the certificates the clearance for example when kcs says now that we have asked you to leave Yes. is what they should have done in 2014. Exactly. And for me, that's what I'm asking. That now, uh, the next thing you're going to hear, they want compensation. But who allowed them in the first place? And also them to be there. Didn't they see that this is really an But who area? allowed Kese to continue dumping rubbish there? It's a complex cycle. It's kind of a complex cycle, really. So, so for me, I think uh, uh, the issue of uh, managing the, the project uh, affected persons across the country i think it's a topic that sometimes we we might have to come there was a in social media one day that i saw somebody has built a very beautiful house on a railway line i don't know whether it was in uganda or it was the normal the normal social media phrase and all that kind of stuff so i think also as citizens of kampala we need to be responsible and also know that there are rules and, and laws that govern this country but not always pointing a finger at, at uh, you know, when, when a situation happens and then we want to put a blame on somebody. Mm. So for me, I think I, I applaud him that for those who are really there and they see this imminent threat in their lives, they shouldn't even be told. They would have left a long time ago or they would have not even allowed themselves to, to, to settle there. Thank okay. You. Yeah. Uh, Honorable Namuga, and I should say welcome uh, Lydia. Uh, to the capture gang, the Honorable Lydia Wanyoto Mutende, uh, who is late to Mwalimu's class. Um, I'm sorry I'm late. Uh, good morning to our listeners and to the gang. Uh, you know, this week is my birthday. I was born on 9th of October. Oh, so I'm nice. still a baby, oh. but I'm, it does not give me <laughs> happy, <laughs> happy, birthday, happy birthday. I'm an Uganda. independence child, so happy I'm, birthday, I, I've happy been spoiled with gifts mm. with a lot of uh, pampering. Oh, so I'm sorry I'm beautiful. late, but okay. it is ending tomorrow. So then next week I'll go back to the usual hustler. Thank you. Mm. <laughs> okay. uh, thank you, Oscar. When you hear Frank speak, you may think Kampala began yesterday. We should be well, reminded. His work no, you, you might think Kampala began yesterday because KCC has been there. All of you recall a transition from the uh, Kampala KCC, Kampala Kampala Capital City to Kampala Capital City Authority, and the reason was to improve in the services. And yes, I agree with you that from Jennifer to Dorothy, budgets have been changing. But you also must appreciate that we've been there as civil servants. You, you've been there for quite some time. I, I heard him say, government is thinking differently now. Eh? Government is thinking differently. One may ask, where, where has government been? Two, when you talk of, about a comprehensive solid waste management plan, 360 degree, one would ask, have we been having a, a technical department that is in charge of solid waste management and, and issues of environment in Kampala? All we are yet to create a new one. Actually, allow me to condole with the families that lost their beloved ones in Chitezi. I was on the floor of parliament and I made a request to the president of this republic to apologize to the country. Upon the loss, one, people lost lives. Everyone is quiet, quiet about it. Two, people lost property. He has been telling you that close to 84 houses have been submerged by water. And people have just been given two million to look for where to stay, two million. And don't forget that people were earning a living from that place. But the way the Chitez issue has been handled, it is too casual, very casual. We've seen governments construct houses, houses for people before even they leave that place, construct for them so that they can go somewhere. But you are telling people, take two million, start from there. Remember, people lost property, every belonging to them in those houses. Who, who but, is giving the two million? Prime Minister's office? Sorry? Who is giving the two million? 
No, the yes. two million, it's Prime Minister's office. Mm. They gave the five and the two million for those who have been in tents. And there are those families that have not been compensated up to now. Those that lost their beloved ones, they have not been compensated. For those that have had bodies that are still under the garbage, have, you know, have been, just been told to go away. So I, I've been told you are organizing for a, for a prayer day uh, at Chitezi. We are waiting for that. And I don't know whether you are also organizing for a mass grave in that place because you know people died mm. and we need to have people need closure hey, yes you yes. cannot just close it like that you need to tell us a plan on how whether you are going to to have a mass grave for those that have not the bodies that have not been recovered don't get excited with this so-called program-based budgeting there is nothing new in that dr pear will tell you we started that the financial for the two last years two the three last financial years we've been operating under that but minister of finance started this when they were not prepared enough parliament has been grappling with that for now we are operating a program based budget budgeting but we are still operating under sectors and all of us are scattered so my dear frank don't ex don't get excited there is nothing new in this so-called budget two on the issue of revenue Frank wants to have the PFMA amended to have revenue collected at source. You will not achieve that. Why not? He will not. You will not. Yes, using, yeah, using at source. You will not achieve that. Why you know not? why? Mm. There was a transition. Lucky enough, Frank, for me, I was working with Masaka municipality, though slightly lower entity than Kampala, but we go through, through the same uh, challenges. For me, I think what we can do, because he knows, first of all, when you go to all the providers that you have, they, are, they have contracts. The people who give, who give you fuel have contracts from our contracts across. The only thing we would ask for from the Minister of Finance, when money is collected, it should be remitted to all these MDAs in time. The challenge is that we do have uh, delays, delays in, uh, 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 in rallies, rallies of this money. For now, the second quarter releases have not been what? They have not been given. Second quarter. And the releases that were made for the first quarter were very trivial. It was a plan of 18 trillion according to the budget of 72 and they only released the six and the cuts are i mean the budget cuts were across board so kcca and such uh, urban authorities are not given special consideration so i think the minister of finance should also be considerate enough you cannot treat kcca as local uh, the other the other the other uh, entities that don't have these special obligations like other local governments that are rural so frank don't get excited with this uh, program based <laughs> budgeting there is nothing much in it then when you look at the, the plan for waste and disposal in Kampala, Frank, sincerely speaking, KCC has not been fair to us. Chitez was decommissioned 10 years back. You people have been in office. I, I, actually, I don't, agree with, uh, I don't agree with colleagues who think that the, the dismissal of technical teams is a solution to the problems of Kampala. No. Dismissal of Chisakandi, the team, is not a solution. The problems of Kampala are far beyond the two. I've been here several telling you that the challenges, all the achievements that the NRM government has made are too. And I can, I can yes, I, wherever I find Lydia, I told her I'm going to give her gifts to take to the president. Hey, but yes, but one. No, but whenever I tell you, 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 you just run away. So one, run away? Mr. Seven and the team have succeeded in, in number one, in, in, a, uh, in, a, in a demeaning the institutions of government. Independence of the institutions of government. If KCCA was left to independently do its work, we wouldn't have been in this kind of circus. Independently. KCCA, do your work. The proposals that they have been talking about, this unsolicited. Actually, I don't agree with you. If they are unsolicited, what have you been waiting for? If people can sit out there and see a problem and they try to bring out proposals for you to look into, where have you been? So meaning that the problem has been there and it is just because the office bearers have been adamant. But I also agree with you to some extent. The politics in Kampala. One, because when you say that you are going to have, uh, you, go, you are going to call for proposals, I don't agree with you. There is this uh, company from Ghana that they've told us about. The one that uh, Chofa Togabi, Honorable Minister and the team, I, I hear it is already on ground. It was, uh, it was launched, was it uh, some two days back? And I'm told that this Ghana company is going to handle, it is going to, 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 to handle the issues of garbage in Kampala. I don't know whether you are aware of that. So if you tell us that you are yet to seek for proposals, it needs also to update us about the company is called, uh, it is called, um, it is called Jospong Group of Company. And the owner is Dr. Joseph Sian Ajepong, the company from Ghana that has been given uh, a, a, a contract 
to handle issues of Kampala. And Lord Mayor Elias Rukwaga has been complaining about it, that how do you sit in the state house and bring a company without considering the normal processes and procedures of, uh, you know, of calling for proposals and this competition that are under. So you must also tell us mm. about this Ghana company. Okay. I've, heard, I've yes. heard about it. Lastly, Frank, if you are to be Frank as your name, do you think... Um, uh, you know, he must come out to tell us the true challenges, the, the, the true challenges of Kampala. Frank, you must accept that garbage has been a business of few individuals. And the reason as to why they've not been allowing the private sector to handle, it's because they are, there is a cartel of those few individuals that have been eating from this garbage. He doesn't want to say this because everyone was wondering. Uganda is operating under privatization, schools privatization, health sector privatization. What is so special with the garbage? He knows you don't have money to handle, to handle garbage. You don't have it. And I should inform the country and update the Honorable pair. You are aware that according to the new budget called Sachula, you are going to have now a budget of 57 trillion, an estimate of 57 trillion of the financial 25-26 from the 72. So meaning we had, we, we used to tell you about this very budget that it was a scam, unrealistic and unresearched. So, Frank, as you get excited, now we are pulling back. We are going to have a reduction of 14 trillion from the budget that we've had currently, mm -hmm. the one that we've failed even to operationalize. So, we are getting back to 57, meaning financial constraints will still come out. Budget cuts are going to also be there across board, Frank. So, we need to really put politics, okay. politics, mm -hmm. and personal feelings out aside, of garbage yeah. aside. Frank, be open and tell your colleagues that are eating from this garbage that they are making us suffer for no good reason. He knows the cartel. If we give him, we give him some few minutes, he can move out and give us give the names. He has them. <laughs> yes, we don't know. Secretary, we write. Give, no. Secretary, write a paper you, and tell us you, the people who are eating from the garbage. Say that we can help you. We, we, we are going to ask him on air. Yeah. yeah, he has when, it. He has yeah. it. He knows the names. Let I, him I like be our, uh, fire. Tony Kent. Wow, it's yeah. quite interesting. In, in fact, I was at one stage beginning to think maybe Honorable Namu guys peeping from my notes. Yeah. I, I opted to push them to this other <laughs> side. Um, uh, to you, acting ED, for some of us that are so much into investigative journalism, those reports had actually come our way, and I'm happy that Honorable uh, Namuga has actually broken the jinx. There is that whole talk of uh, an investor from Ghana coming through mm. and uh, having you know, befallen this disaster a few months ago, many of us wonder what the bidding process was like because that was supersonic speed, choosing one, mm. if at all so. I'm surprised the baby is actually talking. Mm. Babies at this stage are probably still, you know, enjoying mm. their moment. Mm. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> mm, yeah, but, uh, ED, there is as well uh, the whole bit of uh, how we've been interacting with uh, the Wanainchi down that side. We wonder how you arrived at the two million as compensation because it seems to be the agreed amount. We, we, we should say that is not cases here. That's ministry, Prime Minister's office. Yeah, but, but since he's executing on behalf of the, the yeah. ministry, mm. then probably he could as well let us know because people have lost properties more than uh, mm. that tune of two million. So you wonder perhaps how they actually arrived at that. Then we managed to talk to a few, uh, the ones that are you know, eligible for Dundu relocation. But uh, majority are saying, indeed, like you said it, they are not interested in going to Dundu. What they want is uh, KCCA giving them the compensation so they can go where they want. And then in the same regard, because we've tried so much to dig deep into this issue uh, to see it go to bed, tenants... Some tenants, probably it was a miscommunication that you will clarify in uh, Mualimu's class. The whole aspect of uh, the compensation. I cannot be a tenant and uh, receive the same amount like Honorable uh, Dr. Atib Agnes. No, 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 no. no. I'm a tenant for crying out loud. I need to receive much more than the other. Uh, rather, I'm a landlord. Uh, yes, and I need to be receiving much more than a tenant would. So how you guys arrived at uh, these costs is, uh, or rather these price tags is quite so phenomenal for us to know. And as well, be, the fact that we are trying to beat speed. I was watching uh, TV. And, and the rain is here. Yeah. yeah. Mm. I, w I was actually coming to that, Oscar. Mm. I was watching TV and uh, got so touched when I watched some uh, homesteads that have actually been concealed by water. It, it looks like the gates were opened for the water to come through. Water or so rubbish? 
water. water. Ah. Yeah, we, you could call it floods. Mm. You know, we, we are seeing these uh, residents are, that are saying, no, 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 we are not ready. And you said you don't want to force people. You want to give them time. I mean, you are working against time, but apparently you're working against time against people that are slowing down your time. How are you going to handle that? Mm. Okay. Uh, Lydia, uh, on Kitezi. Mm. find my phone um oscar before i talk about chitezi let me just uh, respond to let me just respond to one of the issues that uh, frank talked about the fracas at kcca when uh, the councillors were asking for a report my opinion is that councillors are entitled to a report and doesn't have to be an IGG report. It doesn't have to be a government report. Even you, Frank, and your colleagues, you should have gone to Chitezi and bring an operational report, a disaster report, an immediate action report because KCC councillors represent people so that at your level of council, you also do something, uh, discuss, visit the site, but I thought that uh, it was uh, wrong for the mayor and the KCCA uh, leadership to deny council seating when there was a disaster in your own right, in your own space. So I, 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 I would agree there would have been, because there could have been many layers of reports, but honestly, where I see it, I think that KCCK councillors and the council owed it to themselves at their space to do something. I don't know, I might be wrong, but that's what I thought. The IGG report, the police report, the community report should have come, but there should have been something about case, even a motion to stand with their people. So when I saw that fracas and the speaker leading poor on the closed door of the chambers, I said, really, how do we handle disaster? This was a disaster. So I listened to Frank saying, you know, because there was no report of IGG, uh, they could not deliver. The reports should be many, different layers. Even there should have been a parliamentary report on KCCA. Mm. So I, th I thought that next time, I request that you be more rational and more open-minded because if you are so yeah i i don't know uh, terrible lydia to be clear because when she says next time we don't understand next time a disaster strikes or next time he visits to no next time there is a need for counselors to sit okay. and debate in their space i thought i would been very clear mm. do not now block counselors and say we are waiting for a report from the minister they have two ministers or we are waiting for a report from the other dc's the council let elected leaders in their own space if they want to discuss anything even even if it is just floods in the city or drainage please give them the chance when you begin closing spaces it means it looks like you are hiding something I leave them to discuss even if they came to discuss nothing I, that, that's what I, I, I think. And if I'm wrong, well, I think the, the, the space for this gang is to speak out uh, on what we think. And so Oscar, I was I not happy. Request, Rudy, I want you to comment on something. For me, I wasn't contented with the dismissal of the te technical team and the ministers really kept in office. As uh, somebody who is from government, comment about that. No, I haven't followed the, the report that caused the dismissal because mm -hmm. it, I'm told to follow the uh, a recommendation of, of who it's held the, the biggest uh, responsibility to the disaster. So I do not yeah, normally want to comment. But on this mm -hmm. one, which I know, mm -hmm. because I listened to Frank, I've been asking myself, how can elected leaders have a disaster in their face and they cannot have a flow, even just to, to put a resolution on record and they go to Chitezi? But I, I will. And then Franka says, oh, you know, we told them we cannot sit. They even locked the door because they're done with the seat. Because the IGG report, the, the IGG, the, 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 you, you were reporting to the, that what the mayor decided. That the mayor, oh, they didn't sit because there was no IGG report. They're waiting for the comprehensive report. That's what I picked. So, 
but now you take it, notes, <laughs> Frank. Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> in in Ganga, you skip quiet and take notes. But, uh, to be <laughs> fair, he has been <laughs> listening. <laughs> no, but he's now disrupting me. Mm. And, <laughs> but why don't you <laughs> take notes? Why don't you take notes? <laughs> If that, if this how you are going to work in KCCA, you are going to have issues. So even without OO, the Media. hackling still happens. So <laughs> Media make, make then the I, th that's one. The second mm -hmm. issue mm -hmm. is that um, Frank is not new at KCCA. He has been a director. Mm. So if you are asking about uh, the, this, the, the the if you are talking about the whole institution, then uh, you would have said everybody goes because he's been a director of legal. But for some of them. They did their part, but there was action at another level. So I don't want to get too into the details because the KCCL, I agree with Namuga, it's not a one or two people uh, mm. show. It's a collective responsibility. I would like to see that this sh this shows me like a wake up call. So those who have been on uh, warming their suits or waking up in the morning and take tea, they should know that there is work to do and up their sleeves, even when there is no money. I think we need to have people putting on boots, move on the streets, go to Chitezi and work. Whether they, the KCCA requires more energy and more passion than the budget was not enough. I don't know whether I'm also communicating on that. We need people that are more passionate, that have more energy, that want to deliver, that are go-getters than people that wait for budget allocations or that wait for resolutions of parliament or cabinet. KCCA work is not for that. There was a time. I had a previous. I listened to. Uh, you know, there are many layers of. Uh, there are many layers of. Uh, of leadership at KCCA for a reason because it's a capital city of Uganda, and if I was asked to have an opinion wh which should run, we should not have elected leaders in the city. You can imagine my thoughts. We should have a workforce that delivers a city for all Ugandans because all of us somehow. This is our constituency. Kampala State Council is the constituency for all Ugandans because it's our capital city. So that we have people whose work is to deliver uh, a service and the face of the country, the capital city. But because there are so many layers, we have technical, we have technical people, we have the business community, private sector, we have elected leaders. It, it, the, the, that mix, and then you have the office of the president, who are the other DCs. I'm told now they are 18. So that balancing that, there's more time balancing, negotiating, maneuvering around those dynamics than delivering a good city to all Uganda. This is our city. If we had the chance, we would all vote leaders of the city like we vote the president. Because this city of Kampala is for Ugandans. It's not just for a few people that happen to register here. So the state is bigger than the registered members who vote here. It's our city. Okay. And we should put our energy. Actually, it should be run like a private corporate entity that's the face of Uganda. So that we are able to say uh, Kampala State is the is the constituency for all Ugandans and what hurts one person hurts all of us. You, so that it is, does not happen again. Thank you. Let's stop for a quick break and we will allow Frank to respond to all this. Welcome back from the break. This is the Capital Gang. And in the hot seat is Mr. Frank Rusa. Uh, we're back. Hmm, I don't uh, know where you start you, your thank, responses Thank from. you very much, Oscar. Uh, let me begin with uh, the important, very important issue raised by the Honorable Lydia Wanyoto about elected leaders not being given an opportunity to discuss and being locked out of the council chambers. I would like it to be very clear and on record that it is not true that the technical wing or myself or the leadership or those my predecessors participated in any way, directly or indirectly, on blocking or assisting the blocking of these elected leaders. Even on the day when that fight happened, I was in the chambers myself, representing the ED. I was there speaking that day, I even made a report myself on behalf of the technical wing. The quarrel was the political wing not coming in. It was not about us. We have maintained very, very constructive relations with both the city ex executive committee and the, the, tech, the council. And I agree that the council being the, the people with the social contracts to lead the city 
are indeed entitled to have an opinion. In fact, even yesterday, a section of councillors in my office on that same questions, meeting me as a technical leader, and we spoke, and we even have a meeting with them on Monday to continue conversations about Kites. So I want to first clarify that, that that's not true, and we did not do that. I agree that the council needs to be given um, its space to, to di give direction to what's going on in the city. So that clarified. I want, uh, there are very good questions that have come through from uh, uh, Oscar, uh, Tony, Tony Kent, uh, the uh, fellow panelist here, to this morning, uh, to me in this hot seat. He asks a question of how did KCCA arrive at the two million? For starters, you are right that the two million compensation package has come through the office of the Prime Minister, and I would like to use this opportunity to most to thank the Prime Minister's office for the great leadership that they have given to us and the entire country in coordinating the emergency response ever since the Kitezi problem happened. But these two million shillings is not a, a, an omnibus compensation to everybody who was hurt. As I've told you, there are different categories of people who are affected. There were tenants who are renting houses whose houses got spoiled. There are landlords who owned houses whose houses got destroyed. There are landlords whose houses got destroyed in the process of rescuing others. There are others whose houses have been submerged. There are others whose houses fall in within the buffer zone. They are not hurt, they are not destroyed, but they are in the buffer zone. All these different categories call for different actions because they are different. Now, the tenants have been compensated $2 million to live. Now, the landlords, there's a whole process. There's an inter-ministerial committee of technical staff that are going to do all these things, opening their boundaries, doing evaluation, uh, assessing the extent of the compensations to be made. And then yesterday we had a meeting in the office of the prime minister where we agreed who carries what burden. The prime minister's office will carry the burden to do with compensation of the houses that were destroyed in the process of evacuation. KCCA has to lead on the process of, of compensating those whose properties were destroyed. Ultimately, this money is going to come out of, of the government coffers and it has to go back to cabinet for a decision to be made finally. They are, because it will take time, evaluation and things like this, this money, the two million that was given to landlords, was to get them where to stay. In the meantime, as we periodically update them on the fast tracking of the process leading to evaluation and settlement. So it is not an omnibus compensation as has been, uh, as is being the impression being made, just to clarify that. Then um, there is the question of uh, asked by the Honorable uh, the Honorable Per, Dr. Per. She asked a very good question of saying, when this uh, uh, when you put Kites there, why did you allow people to come and build around it, well knowing that there's a need for a buffer and all this? First of all, Kites is in a different district. It's not under Kampala. So the planning authority for the area around there, the people who give permissions for building, for is a completely different authority. So yes, there is all this question of the planning authority on that side versus the planning authority on this side. Those questions have been coming up. And then, of course, the, the land, what we have learned, the big lesson uh, we have learned from Kitezi is that if we are ever going to do another landfill again, or a land treatment plant, it should be from the word go. When, for example, when we say we need 200 acres, we don't intend to in dedicate the 200 acres to the waste to energy or the landfill. We intend to use almost half of that and create a buffer in actually of 500 meters all around the landfill. So that from the word go, there is no access. So you have almost 500 meters around the entire landfill that nobody can even come to occupy in order not to repeat the unfortunate incidents that happened. Now, there was the question of, uh, again, Dr. Per asked a very good question when she was referring to the MTF and saying, you, you seem to be uh, firefighting, you seem to be pulling out the, the fire extinguisher to deal with the fire. Why don't you look a bit more proactively? I need to say that for the last six or five years, the Kitezi matter and the commission in Kitezi has been featuring as a priority area in our budgets, but has always been returned as an unfunded priority. Because of competing budgetary needs, there could be many other things, but has been returned as an unfunded priority. Some people have said, maybe you didn't make enough noise. Maybe you should have protested. Maybe you should have done this. Yeah. There's a lot. You should have banged the tables and broken them because some people are saying it is the era of banging the tables. I don't know. But uh, maybe, you know, I have been trying to tell my team, especially the, uh, in this situation, there is so much that has happened 
that if we try to look for a finger to blame who did that, we could they, we could take weeks to find out who has done something wrong. My thinking as an individual is that in a crisis of this type, it may help, although it's important to know what threw the donkey in the ditch, it may be better off to th figure out how to get the donkey out of the ditch and put situations that the donkey shall never fall back in the ditch. And that's why we're trying to put our minds to. Honorable Namuga kept using the word excited about this, excited about that. There's no excitement here. I agree actually with her. One of the conversations I'd like to have with the PSST when I get the opportunity is to complain about this program based budgeting because an institution like KCCA, if you come and gather me in a room with all ministries to talk about an element, for example, of solid waste management, it is easy to drown out my voice in that place. Yet if you dedicated focus on KCC as, an, as a unique institution with our unique uh, challenges, you might be able to help us through. So I agree with her. I'm not that excited with program-based budgeting, but I'm saying because it is what is being used and we're at the beginning of the budgeting cycle and the budget call circle has just come out, we have to use the spaces that we have to intensify the advocacy to see if we can, even in that difficult situation, we can get the best out of it. So yes, I agree and hopefully they may give us uh, good attention. I agree with that. The Honorable... Uh, um, uh, uh, Lydia Onyoto raised another issue that is a really a policy issue, which I think should stimulate public discourse and debate. Do we, this issue of uh, politics and authority, I am told in other cities, authorities are, it's a technical, the focus is on technical delivery of what needs to be done to, to deal with, to uh, mitigate against the risk of politics standing in the way of service delivery. But of course, that's a question for policymakers and people who think for this country politically. I'm try I believe that since she's a senior member of the ruling party, this conversation could even go to the high places and have a conversation about it. For us on the delivery side, ours is to implement mm. what they have agreed upon and we shall do our best to do that to the best of our ability mm. in the circumstances that we have been given. Lastly, the, on the question of the MTF, there is a, KCCA has a strategic plan. When I came in, I looked at that strategic plan as a director legal. Because when you go into any, any institution, it's important to understand what this institution seeks to do in, in a given time. And one of the key features of that strategic plan was that it had a huge, uh, very ambitious physical development plan, very ambitious drainage master plan, very ambitious this and that. And a costed budget of which requires 2 million shillings annually to realize it. But as you know, 2 trillion. But as you can see, two trillion, two mm. trillion. Mm. As you can see, as I've heard, there is been 400 billion available. I don't want to cry a lot about money because I know we have so many competing priorities. We are not a very rich country, but you can see the amount of money available vis-a-vis -vis what is in the strategic plan. So you have now to cherry pick and choose what are the priority areas. But one thing I'd like to tell Kampala and especially those who have given us this mandate to trust us for three months, I believe and I've told my team, that maybe before we ask even for more money, let us devote our energies on trying to use the little that we have to the best way that we can. Maybe it will give them the impetus to give us more when they see us okay. delivering. So this is how we have chosen to look at this task, to work with the limited resources that we have, to give it the best of our ability, and maybe it shall trigger action to give us more. <laughs> Lastly, I want to say that... Uh, um, from the technical side, of course, for us, everything that we do, we follow processes. There are processes that guide us. There are rules and regulations. So I know people are, com co uh, are commenting about what I've seen being handed over and declared in the papers. I will not comment on that. I'll only comment about what comes in my jurisdiction uh, as a technical officer because I don't want. I want to be careful to stay on the path of the technical delivery of which mm. I am most. Uh, I'm most competent to comment about. Oscar, let me, but Frank, let me. No, let me, a moment. Take this information. Yes. That is unfair of you, yeah. because this decision was made by your minister, communicated to the people. So you cannot say that I must keep in my lane. No, this was communicated to Ugandans by Honorable Shofa Togabe, the minister. Oh, you're talking about the, the Ghana company. Oh, okay. Let me, on that. Okay, that's okay. Uh, the Honorable Namuga is asking. They have saw something in the newspapers recently that there is a Ghana company that is coming to. You know, ever since it has happened. And the, and the speed of the procurement. Mm. Yeah. And that is, it has oh, been communicated, very not good. in the newspapers, just. Let me comment, Madam. Honorable. So he is asking that uh, she has seen in newspapers and communicated that there's a company which has come in. Ever since it has happened, there have been so many people 
coming in from all sorts of places. Some of them to come and help us, some of them to share ideas, some of them to propose that they can form a solution, and that has been going on uh, like that. And then we heard from the Minister of Kampala that there is, actually I think he has even taken this information to Cabinet, that there is a company from Ghana of a man who is saying that his company is willing to to even decommission the Kitesi on his own on his own bill without any commitments from government at this point and then in the future a, a concession can be negotiated on what can be done after Kitesi has been cleared after the danger has gone now such proposals need to be thoroughly analyzed i saw the i saw the processes on tv but i can tell you that there is an mou there's an MOU which has been drafted, which has come to KCC for consideration. <laughs> we are now having conversations with Attorney General to analyze that MOU, but for sure it has not been signed yet. That is a fact. It has not been signed uh, yet. Oscar, if you can allow, now you, you are yet to see that problems of Kampala will not end tomorrow. Yeah. Because just imagine if you are the Lord Mayor. Mm. An MOU drafted from State House yeah. brought to the ED to look not through. Even, not even consulted. Not even Lord Mayor. Not even the ED. Hey, it not is even not, consulting. But just for clarification, it's not mm. drafted from State House. It, there is an here. MOU proposed by the Ghanaian investor to do the work that he seeks to do that we are analyzing with advice of the Attorney General who will tell us whether or not to proceed with it. And remember, it is dealing with the component of decommissioning, not the whole waste, um, not the whole waste disposal uh, full they, cycle. They, they, I'd yeah. like to say that both of you are right. Uh, no, yeah. both of us are not right. <laughs> no, Oscar, so, on a serious they, note, they, they, we are talking about issues of governance and the confusion oh, in Kampala. Oh, no, 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 no. Hmm? They, we are going to release this man, then we discuss yes. it, because of he has course. told you that he will stay in his lane. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so <laughs> much, Oscar. That is no, so no. kind of you. That's why I've said so you kind of you. Right. It is a hot seat, but it shouldn't burn me down. <laughs> Final word on I, I, I'd like to invite you again, Frank Rosa. I hope Gan. not on the hot seat, maybe oh, on another seat. No, 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 on the hot seat. This yeah. is your, your job it deals it's hot, seat. hot seat only. But this one, I, I, I'd like to, we, Capital Gang, would like to give you some time. And then yeah. you prepare what you're going to tell us about yeah. border border. Let me also it, say it this. It will be like you want Minister of Finance to have Kessie as a single item. Yeah. We shall have single item, border border, when we invite you. Let me also say this uh, as I come to the end of my time here. I want, first of all, thank you and the audience uh, who have listened in. You know, I believe that the only way forward is to have ownership. So when this happened, when the, we were given these temporary appointments, I put together my entire senior management team, and I said, guys, look here, we've got 100 days. What are the low-hanging fruits that we can gather in these 100 days? We spent long hours working till midnight. We have come up with a package of things that we think we can deliver in the limited resources that we have, in the limited time we have, by December. So... After that, I called in a very big meeting of my entire staff. Over 1,000 people gathered at City Hall. And we explained to them what we are thinking. And we got their buy-in. On Wednesday, the next week, we will be telling this country what we are pledging to do in the next 100 days so that we can reset the, the service delivery agenda so that those who will come in the substantive positions after us have a good base to start from. But I want to thank you, Oscar, for giving us this opportunity to come and speak about, to give me this opportunity to come and sort of get, introduce myself to the public and hopefully with the support of government and the citizens of Uganda and Kampalans who are rightly demanding for action, we will take our city forward. Okay. I thank you. Thank you very much, from Mr. Mr. Frank Rusa, the ED of uh, KCCA. Acting ED. Acting ED of uh, KCCA. Uh, we shall have you back here to talk uh, Boda Boda. Thank you, Because that's a, a pending uh, talent. Uh, you are on a uh, microphone. Um, <laughs> on the microphone. Yes. On uh, what we call the Lumo Bill. Um, it, it, it has been fast tracked as, as that uh, MO you've been talking about. Um, few bills get the attention like that so quickly. Opposition parties were in parliament rejecting the bill. Uh, why, why, why is your uh, party refusing, rejecting the bill? I should say as, uh, as uh, a member of parliament from the opposition, I, I should apologize to the country amidst of the challenges that we are facing, including the Chitezi issues that we are just handling now. We are paying much attention on the Lumu bill. And if it was a bill in the interest of the people, we wouldn't have been calling it the Lumu bill. Unfortunately, I have at least the two sponsors of the bill are here in the name of government, uh, Honorable <laughs> Dr. Appear 
and the lady our nyoto the honorable yeah, the no the <laughs> But all along no, we, we thought Rumu, Honorable Rumu is a member of your party. Uh, no. The NUP. Mm-hmm. I, I seconded you, by uh, Mbote Kamwa, no, who is you, an NUP. Right. No, uh, seconding so no is different. Uh, you, should, uh, you should, Oscar, I think the country should know that Mr. M7 made a commitment that by 2026 we shall have no opposition. And they should know, they should know that he's working hard. He's working hard to achieve this. So Honorable Rumu is a paid advocate. And I should say, eh, our, our, okay. we'll let, let, let uh, I should say, we'll Dr. Come. Pea knows, because I, I, don't, I don't think she's directly involved in this, but she also appreciates that the speed at which the bill is moving, there must be uh, uh, somebody, somebody behind it. Uh, when, we were, when our team, uh, the parliamentary team went to Guru, all of you observed that we are, they were supposed to handle Guru issues, but the removal bill began from Guru. And remember when Honorable Sechukubo rose up to talk about the censure motion, they were told he, uh, the speaker outright he told him to take back his manyanga to Kampala. So the Rumu bill was an affair of the people of Guru. Apart from putting that aside, I should inform the country that whatever is happening now should be an eye-opener to all of us there as, uh, as uh, Ugandans. Number one, when you look at the Rumu bill, I want people to appreciate it in brief. The Rumu bill is about four issues. Number one, about how the leader of opposition should come into seat. Either appointment, nomination, whatever he calls it, of the leader of opposition. Two, on how the chairpersons of the four committees that take leadership in, the, uh, in, in parliament, these are accountability committees, uh, Park Central, Park Kosase, Park Local Government, and the Government Assurances Committee. Honorable Lumu want us to take a new direction on how to pick on this leadership. Then how the, uh, gov- the opposition whip is, uh, is appointed. And lastly, is on how the shadow cabinet is appointed. Now, according to his proposal number one, on the lead of opposition, Honorable Lumu wants, wants the leading party to make a proposal of three names. Those names come to parliament, and all the parties in the opposition vote on that lead of opposition. Two, on the shadow cabinet, even the shadow cabinet should be brought to, par- to parliament so that the, lead- the members of the opposition and other opposition parties bring, put in their input on the way the shadow cabinet is appointed. And that, that also includes the same process, includes the whip, the, ch- the opposition whip, and uh, leaders of, uh, of uh, accountability committees. I should inform the country that we are, it's not that we are fighting the removal bill, but we are looking at the object within the bill. What is the intention of the bill? What do we want to cure? Number one, I should inform the country that when, when we go into elections and we, we, a party emerges the winner, for example, for now we look at the NRM, our colleagues will comfortably tell you that when we implement the budget and all the plans of the country we are implementing the budget and sorry we are implementing the manifesto of the nrm which is very clear because the people of uganda i mean voted for them whether they cheated or not they are the ones in power party number two is national unity platform the people of uganda said if it's not nrm you are the people who would have been in that front seat so our manifesto is very important then other opposition parties took the different seats. So it is unfair in this multi-party democracy for somebody to think that a party that brought one member in parliament can take a decision on how this leader of opposition can come in. However, consultations take place. Consultations are there. But when you look at the intention of the bill, the intention of the bill is not to strengthen multi-party politics. Because just imagine Oscar. Uh, Honorable Dul gave an example that for now in Parliament we have our colleagues in the opposition, but they have MOUs with NRM directly or indirectly. For example, we have the Honorable Minister uh, uh, Among Amongin Betty. Is it she Betty? Mm. She's in the UPC. Just imagine if we, now we are to, uh, to 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 vote for the leader of opposition. Do you think Betty and these other so-called colleagues of DP, the UPC, would vote for the interest of the opposition? So if this, uh, when you look at the, 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 the bill, the intention of the bill, this is to weaken multi-party democracy. It will weaken the opposition further. One would ask, Namuga, why are you so much interested in strengthening the opposition? I know these colleagues of ours know that in 2026, they will be on this side of ours. We want them stronger when they come in the opposition. Hey, so when NRM comes to the opposition, we want them stronger so that they can critique us very well. The reason as to why we have the opposition is to check mark government. Importantly so, when you have a strong opposition, Dr. Pierre knows 
when you have a strong opposition that can bring alternative policies, that can bring alternative ministerial policy statements, we make the government stronger. Mm. Country, men, country women should know that the reason as to why we have multi-party democracy is to strengthen governance, not to weaken it. So when you look at these proposals with due respect, Lumu is working for NRM. Whether they like it or not, it is out, I mean, out there it is known. Two, when you look at the way our, our opposite side nominates or appoints their leaders, for example, the leader of opposition, the other side would be their prime minister. How, who is Dr. Payer involved in any way or the other in, bre in appointing and nominating the prime minister? When you look at their cabinets, the cabinet ministers, how is the NRM and you MPs of the NRM, how are you involved in... Uh, in, a, in Yes, in approving. No, in leave alone the things of bring them to the mm -hmm. appointments committee. Appoint com appointments committee has members from the opposition, but very, very, very few. NRM takes the day. So they will do what they want. But I want to ask you, if Mr. M7 brings, what can you do? The Kaboyos were rejected, but later they were brought back. So when we look at the whole circus behind that, when you look at their government whip, who, who appoints the government chief whip? Mm. Directly the president. That is the nomination of the president. He does it for himself all. Look at the shadow cabinet. I, I ask my, myself, what does Rumu want to cure? Number one, when you look at the composition of the shadow cabinet, we have members from different parties. The Honorable Jonathan Odul, our constitutional uh, affairs minister, is from the UPC. We have colleagues, ministers from different parties. So, really, with due respect, okay. Mr. Lumu, Mr. Lumu should be mm. told this is being used. Thank you. This is being selfish. He's, uh, he's serving as a work, uh, you know, as a paid advocate of, mm. by their payers and uh, the honourable, honourable Lydia Wanyuto, and they are comfortable. That's why you see her taking, you know, sipping tea comfortably. Eh? <laughs> Seeing the opposition, be, <laughs> eh? Lydia has her best. Now, you know, do you know what they want? <laughs> Lastly. Their intention, actually, their intention is to have Joel Osenyon out, out of that seat by November. And Dr. Payer knows that. Their intention. You saw the amendments that were, they, were, they were making. How do you censure a leader of opposition? And that is their move. Pass the bill, much as they are saying that the bill will be operational uh, uh, in, the next, in, the next, in, the next, uh, in the next parliament. One would ask, then why do you rush it? Thank Lastly, you. Oscar, mm. allow me to say this. Even if it's for the next parliament, it's not about person. The bill is not about nope. It's not about senior. Whether you like senior or not, the bill is about Uganda. And I should inform do, uh, uh, Honorable Umu. Yes, God, it is God that brings these leaders. I know Bakaita Kasaja, Baina Kasaja, Senyon is young. <laughs> when they see these young boys occupying these seats, they are also jealous. So tell them their time has not come. Let them wait whether 20, 35, <coughs> their time will come to occupy these seats. But for now, let us not make laws for individuals. They should be laws for country and mm. prosperity. Thank you, Honorable Gareth Namuga. I like your fire. Let's have a quick break and then we'll start with you, Tony Kent. We'll come back from the break. This is the Capital Gang. Uh, thank you for listening. We've just concluded uh, Honorable Namuga's fire. Tony Kent. Mm. Lamentation. Yeah. <coughs> on the Rumu bill. Uh, mm. Well, for, for, for perhaps the person that is on the outside listening to us from whichever place it is, I am seated in the midst of Oscar and uh, Honorable Namuga. So perhaps I'm the shock absorber, just in case. Um, I want to make quick comments on uh, what we have dubbed the Lumu bill, which is uh, apparently supposed to be, by the right naming or nomenclature, the Administration of Parliament Amendment Bill 2024. Well, like uh, Honorable uh, Namuga pointed out, there is quite about uh, four elements that fall into the picture. And uh, maybe I would love to seek clarity because I was trying to get into the depth of it, but I did not happen to follow the first reading that happened in Parliament. Um, I was made to understand that uh, Honorable Lumu is proposing that for the election of leader of opposition, the leading party presents the three names from which the rest of the opposition, the rest of them, shall actually elect someone. Not uh, the approach that exists as of now, where the leading party, uh, say for example, Lydia is now in the leading opposition party. She's the... Okay. That's interesting. Uh -huh. And, and, and she, she makes a point of 2026, which also gives me a direction to, to, to fire her a question, perhaps. But my whole point being, if at all it is uh, three members from, uh, or rather three MPs from, uh, let's say now, the NUP, which is the leading opposition party, what pain would it be if it is from they that you choose a leader of opposition? Uh, then number two, uh, looking at uh, the aspect of how political parties have reacted to this is a little 
confusing yet as well surprising why do i say so i follow honorable namuga she's been at uh, the media spaces that i always operate and uh, that is the national broadcaster and uh, quite a number of others um maybe because perhaps you fall to a side that is on the advantage that is the advantaged side majority have been saying that we were not consulted by nup uh, before this idea came through we were not consulted before uh commissioner Which category is that? i'm talking about the rest of you the rest of the, members the rest of, of the opposition the members of parliament or parties members of parliament okay. of course mm -hmm. uh, and and of course that would for me mean that uh, in this kind of arena which is proposed by honorable lumu it would give a better consensus because he's proposing that uh, Consultation is made with the rest of the opposition parties before any kind of opposition uh, stand is taken. And at that, it would all be uh, an involvement of the Jemas, the FDCs, the... Uh, uh, well, apparently the political parties are off my head right now. But the whole point... We also have PPP. Mm. Abed Wanika. Uh, uh, hey. uh, uh, whatever Bidandi Sari's party. Wow. Mm. I, I need to, to rejuvenate my history. Mm. Santa. I, I need to rejuvenate my, 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 my knowledge on, on political parties. But all in all, I was of the view that uh, this is something that is general. And then, of course, when uh, Honorable Namuga spoke about next uh, election being they in power and the leaders in the opposition, I'm beginning to think if this law is against you, why worry about it when you'll be the ones in power and it will be the leaders to battle uh, to battle with it or battle it out um, at that. <laughs> 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 yeah, but 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 in a nutshell, mm. I'm actually surprised that uh, majority are pointing fingers at uh, Joel Senyonyi. Uh, Honorable Wanyoto on on the previous show last Saturday was speaking about how laws should never have eyes. Mm. But uh, I, I want to to say yes and no in one side on one side and the other side as well, because what makes me say no is the fact that a law shouldn't target anyone. Mm. But the reality is a law target someone because that is why it comes if we say we are bringing a law to 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 handle thieves we are targeting thieves if we say we are bringing a law on uh, but, but not thieves yes. theft, but not theft. A yes, yes. theft. Mm. oh yes okay theft not thieves but mm. who is the thief who who brings about the theft anyone you, mm. <laughs> you do not you do not write a law for whoever has mm. crossed the line you first mm. we write a law so that someone and who crosses cross the line and, and in that case joel mm. senyon is not going to be an lop for life if at all we are saying this is targeting LOP, the current LOP. I, so it could I, I, be. I dare say you've you've missed that one because seriously, if, Oscar. Mm, if you if mm. you want if you say you have a law, then it should reflect some values. No, but but uh, but I'm but I'm surprised. Individuals. Mm. Actually, Oscar, why I'm surprised is the fact that mm. everyone is pointing it at Joel Senyonyi, and I wonder what because kind of threat be, he has be, become. No, no, because they know what Lumo's thinking is like. No, but good mm. enough. We have people that are directly attached to mm. to, to plot one in Nakasero. Maybe mm. they'll let us no uh, because honorable namuga could be having a different version we'll of what let her we have. give her two minutes uh, uh, two, mm. two minutes before we come uh, to uh, uh, now i think uh, we Dr. must uh, mm. we must face the reality now for everyone that has been following parliament and how events have been moving on there has been a very serious battle between the office of the speaker and the office of the leader of opposition i should inform the country that ever since joel senior took over office all the staff, police analysts, po political analysts, policy analysts, all those were withdrawn from the office of the leader of opposition. So the the plot to the plot to demotivate, the plot to disfranchise, to demean the office of leader of, of opposition began since the time Honorable Senyon came into office. So this plot that is moving on with Honorable Muzi Bill is a plot to dwell with Joel Senyon. You heard the man tell you that ever since I became a lop, I've never been invited for any single commission meeting, yet I'm supposed to be on the commission. So whoever has been following parliament, it has not just come now on the bill. The thing has been moving on. So that's why we are telling you that's the intention, and that's why they made an amendment of how do we censure how do we remove a leader of opposition from parliament? And they had made a proposal of incompetence. And they asked them, what does incompetence, how do you measure incompetence? So it is a very, very funny bill. That is why in the first proposal, for whoever has been following the bill, they thought the proposal had so many things, only to be gazetted as a bill on opposition, just opposition alone. So if you've been okay. following this bill in, in a nutshell, mm. it's about Honorable. targeting uh, Senyonyi for now mm. and... Mm. 
the others will happen in the future. So who is uh, Honorable Lumo working for? Because that question has often fallen into the public space. Yes, I, I would on. really start from that point that Lumo as a writer, as a member of parliament, mm. to come up with a private member's bill. To say that he's working for somebody or somebody sponsoring, as my colleague Honorable is saying, I think that is not being very fair to honorable members of parliament. In, in fact, it will be kind of uh, uh, discouraging some of us who want to even bring maybe more tough bills than the one of Lumo. So nobody sponsors, uh, is sponsoring him, and I'm sure he's doing it with his mm. own right mind. Oscar, issues of electing <coughs> leaders in parliament is not something new. If you, I think during the time of, uh, of Honorable Lydia, the parliament used to even vote for their leaders of the committee. Honorable Lydia, isn't that the case? That to, no, me have never been a member of parliament. Of okay, you were in Yale. I was in Yale. But if yeah. you read our mm. previous rules and and, and, and and some of these rules of parliament, uh, rules of procedure, that committees were electing their their, their leaders. The way now uh, the, the leaders of opposition appoint their uh, accountability chairpersons and the, the party in government appoints also their leaders like that. So for me, I think the issue of election or voting leaders in parliament shouldn't be a very big deal. What The question we should be asking now is, what is that defect in the law that Lumo is trying to address? If it is not there, by the way, the bill has not yet even been brought to parliament. Who says that? No, no, the first reading, yes. But who says that the bill will be passed? We are just being, you know, there's a lot of assumption. There, there are a lot of pessimism. We know Dr. Country, uh, Agnes, her team, <laughs> <Yeah. a pair. laughs> in this, this, this parliament has created uh, interesting times. <laughs> the former leader of opposition uh, was mostly supported by members of the NRM. Mm -hmm. So members of NRM would sit like you're seated there and they mm -hmm. were the ones supporting the leader of opposition. So that before is Before you came. So now, but for me, now again, as you say, we have members of NRM <laughs> who are supporting Honorable <laughs> uh, Lumo. Mm. I, I re personally, me, I work on facts. I really kind of want to see the bill, uh, the, the second reading, and members of parliament will be given an opportunity to discuss the bill. Mm. So for me, I think that is, like for example, is meeting now the opposition. And the opposition have said, no. I'm also hoping that when it comes to parliament, we are going to ask those questions. What, are, what is it that you really want to address? I've been following some of those things. That some of the issues is even actually not understanding some okay. of the things that he has proposed in his own bill. So for me, yeah, I, I saw it. So, so I think we should give Honorable Lumu an, op an opportunity and a benefit hey. of doubt. Let him continue. When he comes on the floor, he should be able to defend and see if but, his but bill will carry the you, day you, or you, not. You, you missed the point. Uh, the, I will go to, um, to to Lydia here. But let me, said, let me just... Let yes, me, let that me you guess. are sipping coffee just like that. I'm <laughs> sipping a coffee from Mountain <laughs> Gone. And it's yes. a cool morning go on, in Kampala. Go on, Agnes. Mm. No, it yeah, is go me. On. Okay. Mm. So, conclude. Yeah, so for me, I, I wanted to, to conclude by saying that one, the country is aware that government has promised us in parliament that they are bringing a comprehensive constitutional amendment bill. And so, this could be one of the things that government is also proposing. But if Honorable Lumu feels that this is something that he can pick on Very and urgent. follow it and, and it's urgent as, <laughs> as we are seeing, <laughs> I think we need to just give it a benefit of doubt and let us um, uh, put it on the table, discuss it and see if it is something that the country actually needs now. Mm. Otherwise, um, by talking, because I've heard him also talk, uh, Lumu uh, starting to say, why are people very interested in this bill? But the idea of saying that somebody, the government is sponsoring his NRM bill or what, we have over 300 members of NRM. If we want a bill, one of us can come up and bring a bill. But this one, it is an opposition member of parliament bringing his bill and is actually discussing issues of the opposition. So I, I, I think this thing of saying government, what, mm. it's, it's too early. 
It's okay. too early to really judge. And, and I think that the questions we should be asking now, that what is, is it a governance issue? Is it a political party dispensation issue? Is it a suppression within the opposition itself? What is it that he really wants to address? Okay. But it's not, it's Did not, you? my mm. colleague, it's not an NRM bill. No. For NRM, it will come. <laughs> the, the, the it will not succeed by bringing it yourself. That is why you had to get a, an advocate to move it for you. Uh, they couldn't succeed with it. Yeah. Mm. Uh, two messages here for Lydia. Uh, Nicholas in Kampala says, Lydia and Wanyoto should say the same about Uganda. We don't need people who wait for budgets. We need people with passion who put on their boots and go to work without, without waiting for budgets. The baby monkey lands well on the back of mother monkey. Kampala's leaders have learned from the NRM government where people are in leadership and politics for money before anything else. Mm -hmm. Ronald Misinde says, uh, if Lydia was hurt by the sucking of her friend Kisaka, because she, by the way, she, Dora is an old girl of Gayaza, so because she's familiar with the way KCCA operates <laughs> and its councillors. And who does she suggest that without money, uh, okay. people should show up? How, Mazima? Okay, let me uh, declare my conflict. Uh, 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 Dora Chisaka is an old girl of Gayaza, and Gayaza girls, we are like white ants, we are always together, we are one person. Mm -hmm. So, but that's for another day. Mm. I want to talk about to uh, this Lumu. Uh, Lumu. She was ahead of me and she was my leader in Gaza High School. But Lumu, when the Honorable Namuga said that the office of the head of opposition does not have analysts, I think that they, they don't have a technical people. But I think parliament should have technical people who do not fall on any side so that they are advise members of parliament. You need governance advisors who have grounding in commonwealth practices. Yeah. Uganda is not an independent legislature. Yeah. We are members of the Commonwealth. Now the Commonwealth has standards. Your bills must pass the test. Yeah. You don't just wake up because you're a member of parliament. Mm -hmm. You have the right to bring a private member's bill, which passes the certificate of uh, no, no, no financial implication. Then you walk with your suit and go. Mm -hmm. and, and it's given time on the other paper. Parliament is time. It's too expensive mm -hmm. not to pass the test of standards. Yesterday, we spent the whole day uh, discussing the, uh, the judiciary's annual report and, you know, issues of standards. Show the parliament, show us some feeling, the public, that you also mind about standards. Mm. So you are, you are debating, whatever I'm hearing, that debate, is the question is that did Lumuzi bill pass the standard? Mm. Mm. Just answer that question. Does it mm. pass the governance standards? standards? Mm. Does it pass the multi party disposition standards? Mm. Does that, it that, pass? That, that, yeah, does that it is when pass, Namuga says you are drinking. Does it, pa tea does it pass the Commonwealth mm. standards? Mm. So, for, because I'm a member of the NRM, I ask these questions in second, I make my contribution. So, I'm sipping my Arabica coffee from Mumbai because really you cannot insult us to that level. I'm not that level <laughs> of discussing a bill which may not have passed these standards. That's why I'm laughing. You don't know what you're talking about. We are a different animal. We shall see. <laughs> we are a different animal altogether. We do not deal with such level of things. Because how, how did that even, how did that bill even find its way for debate on talk shows? The way you are talking about it, I don't think it has passed Commonwealth standard. It may not have multi-party standard. Even the issue... Then, f first, first of all, the, 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 there are issues. There are issues that can pass the test of being in law legislation, mm -hmm. but they are also administrative. I, for my mm -hmm. thinking, a lot of what you're saying about Lumo's thing is more administrative. Than what people. stops Than political people. parties from mm -hmm. sitting somewhere in their party headquarters mm -hmm. and agree yeah. whether they want to vote on two people or three mm -hmm. people? Yeah, Must it be a law? In you. NRM, hmm? by the way, God has helped us. In NRM, we go for campaigns, and by the grace of God, really, by grace of God, we win. We take the majority. Yeah. But, and then that means that we sponsor candidates to provide leadership in parliament. We do consultations. We, we also do not bring one person. Mm -hmm. 
We have internal mechanisms. We, we open up space. People express interest. We get 10 people on this seat. 10 people we go. We even sometimes have elections. But we never take this thing to the law. We do not go to Paris and say, for, if we want to be in this position, please put for us in the law that we should bring three people, thank four people. No. Thank you, Lydia. So, now, so now on Arevo Namuga, please leave this show. Be knowing the value that, that, that your debate on that bill of opposition does not meet the test of NRM standards. Mm. We are way so, above that. Uh, now that you've brought in the issue of standards, let's move away from the bill. Uh, uh, no, before, before, no, before, before, before we leave the bill, let's yeah. believe no, the before bill. No, before we leave the bill, Lydia time. must appreciate and know that the leadership of Parliament is NRM. She must know. Yeah. And when she talks about the test of ta- the test of the law, the, the speaker, so the, yes, the test of the standard, the speaker and the deputy are NRM. Go and debate yes, that. No, and no, and those cons- yes, and if they do something, you cannot put away the NRM out of it. So she must that know that advice. by that NRM is under. You it. know, if they didn't give you, you said no, position, no, the hundred percent. No, we have so several of our colleagues who complained. We came and asked for space for bills you NRM did not give. So you cannot differentiate the speaker from NRM. Complain. Let them give you such. You are no, the public so knows the quality people, of your position in Parliament. Tell your people to know what it takes to be a speaker and a deputy, and know that we are serving a country, not a person. I should tell. Yeah, the, she I should, should know I we are serving a country, not a person. I should tell the listeners that we have, we have live stream, live streaming. So, <laughs> standards. If you want to see video of Namugan Wanyoto, you can just go to live streaming. Both of them are there. They See are, po- they are po- pointing figures to at each other. And so, Lydia, uh, Lydia, Honorable uh, Lydia Wanyoto, Honorable Lydia Wanyoto, I want to, I want us to go, that, that one has not because I've switched off your microphone. They, Honorable Wanyoto, I want us, uh, I want, I would request you to take us to, to take us to Kenya. So what's what's happened uh, uh, to the DP? The deputy president has been impeached. Where did this start? You know, Parliament of I mean, government of Kenya has two legislative arms. There's the Senate and also the Assembly. So the Assembly level is done, and now they've moved to to Senate. But. Um, where did it start? The rain began beating Kenyans when in their 2010 constitution they amended the, the, the constitution to have what they call a running mate for the presidential elections. What I'm not sure, what many of us who are governance space researchers are doing is whether or not Kenya was ready um, for that type of arrangement because the test began, I'm been talking about passing the test. Yeah, Dr. Afia agrees with me, you must put things that The first test of uh, that uh, governance uh, space was a creature of the concern of Kenya, like I've said, but it began, the first test began with the uh, Uhuru Kenyatta, with Ruto, and you saw that they fought from the beginning to the end. So it looks like for Kenya and maybe some of these African countries, you cannot afford to create centers of power at the top. Mm-hmm. It, it is not worked for Uhuru and the Ruto, and now it's not working for Ruto and Gachagua. And maybe they may want to revisit whether it, they can continue like that because it it creates centers of power and disabilities. Why? Because the vice the deputy president has electoral mandate mm-hmm. when in other countries like uganda a vice president only mandate has from the appointing authority that's where the big difference is so you had gachaka talking about i was voted by seven million people that one mm-hmm. is a, a center of power and can cause problems because you have the mandate of the people what i had not looked into in the law electoral laws of kenya uh, i've been looking at it is how they leave offices. Apparently, they can leave office by vote of an assembly, which is actually very unfortunate because maybe they should have had a referendum or put a question or gone back for elections because he's, he's a, a creature of a law, of a, an election. So, but where did, so, so, uh, where so, did this start? It began uh, with the politics. Uh, let me ask this question. So, now, you, I'm answering you, your question. No, no, just a small one. You're giving me another question. Um, no, no, no. So, it's all fitting. So, you, in some ways, you're suggesting that the, this impeachment was sponsored by the president. It was not sponsored by the president, mm. so to speak, but it is, it is sponsored by the way they have structured the power. 
and I'm saying that the test of what is happening in Kenya, given the first test which happened between Uhuru and Ruto, and now Gachagua and mm. Ruto, it looks like they cannot run an, a, 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 they cannot run a government with two huge centers of power. Okay. Because both of them are elected. Okay. And and because no. of that conflict mm. sense you and then egos come in and then of course there are powers and then there are people who push in the fire. So what have they listed as the reasons for impeachment? Centers of power. I mean the the, 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 the deputy president feels that he was not given uh, enough space to make contribution to formation of cabinet and therefore he went tribal. He he retreated into Mount Kenya. He began saying, you know, people from Central have not been given enough sense. I'm and they have the face of Central in, in the in the in the in the government, in the scheme of things. And he was speaking that because he knew he had the mandate of the people, the seven point two million voters that voted him along, alongside Ruto. If he was an appointed vice president, he wouldn't be talking the way he was. So he began now exciting people. And and so then he be, the, the, the relationship began uh, divided, the divide began growing. And in the politics you cannot avoid the people that will come in to add fire. Because this vote in the assembly was not because they hate Gachagua so much. They are candidates who want to be the vice, yes. the deputy president. Yes. And, and the power center has kept drifting and shifting. And Kenya, business, uh, the economy is run by politicians mm -hmm. and okay. the private sector. So it's about money, it's yeah. about power, it's about positions, it's about influence. Okay. But most important, it's about how they've set centers of power. Okay. You cannot have two centers of power running a government, okay. at least in Africa. Dr. Atima Pe. Yeah. Thank you very much. For me, I, I look at the situation in Kenya as a politics versus governance issue. It is not enough to be a politician and you think that being a politician can actually make you a president. Mm. And I see that happening here in Uganda where anybody thinks of, well, so long as I'm a politician, I can actually run a government. And uh, I think it started like my uh, colleague has just mentioned, uh, Lydia has just mentioned, that the deputy president from the word go, it was about politics that actually uh, made him a running mate. But you remember that even during b the campaign, even before really they, they won that election, there were already a lot of questions about his capability of actually running that office. But because there was this tribal politics of, uh, of the tribes, the number, the central, and, and, and the money, and all that kind, and the positioning, and the strategic positioning, that happens a lot with us politicians, Ruto had no option but to, to work with him to get that central vote and also a few other factors. But now when it came to now the real work of a deputy president, mm -hmm. I, I, not to say that really maybe um, uh, criticizing him, but at a personal level and also you could see from the media that he was really lacking in, in, in very many instances. And also, I think uh, the other issue was, uh, I think, which my colleague has also expanded a bit more, is how the governance structure of Kenya is. Where you have uh, the, the 7 million votes that was given for the president and the running mate, all of them can claim claims it because they were moving together. They, they assumed that all the votes came because I was also there. And now when it comes to running the government, I think the deputy president position seems not to be, uh, you know, at the same level with the president. And and for me, I think that is what caused a lot of uh, uh, kind of mm. conflicts and all that. And also remember that in that parliament, the president, much as they are in the same party, but there is also an element that within that party, there are actually people who think that. Uh, uh, and you know the politics of Kenya. Uh, you, you've, you've followed it where ODM changes to this, changes to that. You'll not be surprised. Mm. You'll not be surprised that this deputy president will also form his own party and have his own people and tomorrow bounce back again to be the yeah. president okay. and pick a running. So yeah. for me, I think it's really a bit political that at the moment they are actually starting to reorganize themselves, to realign themselves, to, you know, to go for that. Okay. So th that pol mm. politics versus governance yeah. issue for me could be one. Tony Kent, you're problem. the journalist here. But you, when they were campaigning, in uh, Gachagua himself was attacking his tribe, and yet he, he, he had come on, on a tribal card. <laughs> yeah, for the benefit of uh, winning a vote, you don't mm. blame him.
Yeah. But for the aspect of the impeachment, I was reading through the a Senate message from uh, the uh, National Assembly. And uh, some of the reasons they gave, as uh, Lydia was highlighting, as uh, Sister Honorable Atim was as well sharing, just to read a few in brief. Uh, number 10 is gross misconduct by openly or publicly insubordinating the president, who is the head of state and government. Number 11, gross misconduct of, of by persistently bullying state and public officers. Number six is serious reasons to believe that His Excellency the Deputy President has committed crimes under sections named therein of the National Cohesion and Integration Act. And there is also, for purposes of time, something to do with uh, uh, gross violation of articles within the Constitution and the fourth schedule to the Constitution by undermining devolution. Now, why am I reading this? And perhaps relating them to the question you've uh, prop, uh, popped on to me. I am bringing them into the picture for the aspect of do we blame Ruto? Is he against his man, his main man back in election time? Or perhaps Rigathi has done wrong in accordance to what he's supposed to be sticking to the oath that he took when he became deputy president. So when they point out these as the elements they are in, and these are by law. In my view, it feels like, much as I might be an Oscar kind of person, as long as I do what's wrong by virtue of what Oscar calls right, I cease to be a right person to be next to Oscar. Let's, let's have uh, Honorable Namuga in the two minutes we have of the show left. Uh, oh, we should not forget the effects of uh, the Gen Z's actions during the time when they were fighting the finance bill. And you know, several people brought out the name of if Ruto is out of power, the deputy president will serve us better. So that alone brought that, <laughs> that, 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 that discomfort between the two. Actually, that is the source of everything. And now Gachagua started to feel that, you know, I can also occupy this seat. So if this man is seen incompetent, that means any time I can occupy it. So the insults that they are talking about, eh, him showing that the president has issues, you know, all those arose out of the, the, the Genesis things and the finance bill. And in politics, you know, you expect that. And you cannot blame Gachagua, even if it was me. So if the man is seen weak, I automatically must warm because I'm the next. So, <laughs> so no, no, Lumo's Lumo thing is different. Lumo is different. Lumo is different because no, politics, politics is about interest. If somebody is a deputy president and if this man is found guilty of anything, so the man is right if he, if he proves, if he had proved that Ruto was incompetent. So you see, in some ways, it's a bit like Lumo. The, the, no, it is no, Lumo's, no, no, Lumo's I mean, bill. I mean, I mean the sponsorship. Uh, because you've, no, accused the <laughs> of, you've accused NRM of sponsoring that bill. No, these two, these two are incomparable. Yeah. These two are very different. We are talking about people, who are, two people who have offices, and we are trusted by the people. Mm. Uh, the Gachagua got his 7 million votes. The other one is the president. Yeah. It is not Ruto that appointed Gachagua. It's not an appointment the way it is done here. So if, uh, if, if the genesis began on a job and the man sees that he can easily get into the seat, so for me, I think it is Ruto that is using these senators to, to move Gachagua out because of co co openly showing interest, even if it was you. So, so Ruto, Ruto, Ruto is yeah. unsecure. So that is, that is all politics. It is politics in Kenya, and we must agree. Me, yes. that is Let me allow the one minute left, uh, Honorable Wanyoto to congratulate Uganda on independence and also congratulate the Uganda cranes that uh, won yeah. a massive football last game evening. last evening. Mm. Mm. Uh, first of all, let me, be, let me begin by congratulating all the Ugandans because it was full house in Nambole mm. who turned out to support our beloved team and uh, sometimes we say we should all be like the football fans but when we come to elsewhere we fight yes i did people are so happy and you think ah that's what the picture yeah. of uganda should look like yeah. so kongs for the morale for turning up and then we won uh, a win is a win if even it is one zero mm. to is a win mm. then for you independence i would like to congratulate all ugandans for having attained our self-governance for the last 62 years Challenges not with the standing. It's like how yes. you leave a child to stand. You keep falling but standing. Thank keep you, falling and you. standing. And yes. all for all those who got the medals. Yeah. We had 42 people, get, 40 people getting medals. Thank we you. The medal is for... Wanyoto, thank but you. it was also my birthday. And happy thank birthday. you for the birthday we, we, we have wishes. Already, mm. Mm. And thank you. You have not wished me properly. Mutende, we will. Thank you very much. Honorable Dr. Agnes Atima Pea. Thank you, Honorable uh, Goreth Namuga. 
Yes, yeah, for organizing we, the parade. The uh, parade was. <laughs> thank you, Tony Kent Chaze, Magical Radio. Uh, thank you, the listeners. Thank you, Star Cafe, for powering the gang. I am Oscar Semoyamsoke, and I shall see you next week. <laughs>